What I would like uh, to do is to share with you what I did in preparing for this event today. So I have a 10-year-old daughter, and um, I was asking her the other day, darling, do you think computers can be creative? Because creativity seems to be the last little area that we can keep as humans where no computer can really do something like that. And especially as we're um, looking to the Coding Da Vinci Hackathon results, so it's the, it's the question, can computers really be creative? And my daughter straight away said, Mom, sure, they, they can be creative. But uh, the question is, do they really want to be creative? And maybe I would need to help them to decide what they want to make and maybe for whom they want to make it. And I think there is definitely some truth in that, not that, that my 10-year-old really has a full view of the world already, but um, for me, personally, when dealing uh, with artificial intelligence, I very much like uh, the term augmented intelligence more, because uh, for me, uh, it is an act of co-creation to really bring value to our life and to our society. And what I want to share is things that are a little bit outside my daily job, uh, where I'm a consultant working with doctors or organizations uh, to making um, augmented intelligence work there, but things that inspire me and that are in the field of creation and creativity. So this is what I want to do, and uh, I start with this example. So, um, it is, uh, so you don't have to think, so I picked uh, this song, Not Easy. Have, has anybody heard that song already? So the song, Not Easy, is a special song. And I didn't pick it because it's not easy to prepare for such an event like this. Of course not. Uh, I, I use this because it is a very special song. It was a song co-created, um, and it is a cognitive song because a machine, a cognitive system, was working, collaborating with the artist, and maybe some of you already noticed him. It is the uh, Grammy Award winner, Alex Dakit, and he has been collaborating with this uh, new intelligence system. And let's that see how this in works. A way that we can understand it and relate to it. Very impressive. In culture, Watson analyzed millions of lines of text, Wikipedia articles, in New York culture, Times front Watson pages, social media, blogs, and more, articles, finding the most pervasive New York Times themes and covering the way people media, felt about blogs them. and more. Finding the most pervasive themes. Watson also analyzed the lyrics and composition of over 26,000 top 100 Billboard songs. Watson also analyzed covering hidden patterns in both song structure and emotion. Billboard songs covering hidden patterns in both song structure and emotion. It's almost like having a million of yourself reading a million books at once, and a million it's articles like and understanding social media, and, and just conversation in general. A million I could never do that. Understanding social media, and just conversation in general. I could never once do that. Once Alex began the music making process, we gave him a... Pro so just a short uh, a clip. So what is really inspiring for me, it is that a cognitive system sort of read for the artist cultural data of the last five years, including social media. So the, uh, so the last uh, five years, top 100 billboard charts that are coming out every week. And what I felt particularly uh, attractive for me is the way that the data was represented to also inspire the artist to create something that he wanted to create. Uh, so he wa wanted to have a heartbreak song and he came up with It's Not Easy. So I invite you to listen to that. So it's, it's a very interesting way of collaboration. So the next example, and I hope we don't have any minors in the room at the moment, so it gets a little scary. So the next thing, um, I don't know if you have heard or seen the, the movie Morgan. It's an AI thriller. And so what the cognitive system has done here is, um, actually, he has watched hundreds of trailers um, and sort of learned in a corpus of knowledge what makes a good trailer. So what is keeping people at the edge of their seats uh, to, and what is really engaging them to go to the movies. So here, so uh, the cognitive system was also watching this new uh, film that is coming out and suggested the top 10 
uh, sequences that would make and compose a really cool trailer for this. And let's uh, see just a short sequence if he uh, made his job well. It's first birthday. He exceeds our, our wildest expectations. Nice to meet you, Morgan. Nice to meet you, Lee. I have a 13 year old daughter. You don't get to see her much anymore. <laughs> Skip, don't go in there, okay? Don't what? Don't you go down there, Skip! Don't be afraid, Amy. I have to go say goodbye to mother. So definitely it was a little chilly for me. So you have to judge for yourself, but anyway, I think it is a good example of showing that the supercomputer did not really do everything and just cut everything perfectly, but just helping the producer to maybe not oversee something that might be relevant for his piece of, of work. So another field. So anybody, an idea what that is? So it is something, of course, something you, that you can taste. It is for the cheese lovers among you. It's blue cheese tiramisu African style. And this was cooked <laughs> by a three star, uh, Michelin star chef, Ono Kukmaya, in Amsterdam in the Okora Hotel. And it was cooked for us at a conference. And it was something that he co-created with a cognitive system. And, um, so the system uh, learned, I think, digested over thousands of recipes, learned a lot of uh, things uh, about local taste, because in, in the world we have local tastes, and he also learned uh, a lot of about chemistry and things that you might need to know when dealing with food. And for this uh, three-star chef, Ono, it was really a, a particular interest for him because when he creates new recipes, it can take up to one year and, and he can only remember, and he's really trained, he can only remember four uh, tastes or, or uh, four ingredients and think about if this is really f uh, put, um, fitting together. So what the cognitive system is doing is really when creating new dishes, uh, also um, uh, point him to, to synergies. And, uh, and uh, so the synergy here was that uh, the cognitive system um, also helped to break uh, a barrier because the cognitive system found out that mascarpone cheese and blue cheese have some similarities in the texture, in the fat, and, and suggested that this might be also a good taste. And maybe he had read somewhere also where other people were uh, in some recipes using it. So it is something not to say that this is always the right thing, but just inspiring people of maybe doing something differently where we would uh, be restricted in our thoughts uh, uh, and maybe by our own taste or what we had learned previously and not at all considering maybe something. So here, another great example of what can be done. And I don't like cheese at all. And I need to tell you the blue cheese tiramisu was excellent. So sometimes it is worth also trying out and exploring new boundaries. Um, so. I have, I think, shared with you uh, a few examples so where people were exploring things together. In my daily job as consultant, I also have learned that sometimes some methodology is also helpful. And so um, uh, one, one methodology that I would definitely like to, to tell you what is really working when working with new things, new technologies, uh, it's really to look at the core of problems and really understand uh, uh, what is the issue, and never delegate this underst understanding. Don't, don't think that it is, uh, uh, just assume what the problem is, but really ask people, interview them, uh, the doctor, uh, maybe so the music lover, what they want to hear and feel and experience 
in the moment that they are dealing with this new te technology. So it's definitely a good way of thinking um, sort of from, from the problem and then have a diverse team around, not only AI, uh, augmented intelligence and, and uh, experts, but really domain experts and really creative energy in the room and then go about in an agile way uh, and try out, explore, test and go uh, uh, and, and extend uh, your mind there. Another example, uh, as I've run a hackathon in Hamburg a few weeks ago on healthcare, so, and this was also something that I took away. So, so we invited people uh, um, on the topic of healthcare and we were bringing experts from the healthcare sec sector, doctors and advisors in that space. We brought uh, um, cognitive technologies and robots and we also ha had, of course, the creative crowd in the room. And so the interesting bit was one of the winning teams um, invented something to support an Alzheimer's patient um, uh, during the day and, and see if a, how a robo could support the Alzheimer's patient. And um, so for the Alzheimer Foundation that we had with us on, on, on the hackathon, this was something that they had never considered before and uh, quite frankly uh, considered unethical to think about maybe have a robot working uh, with an Alzheimer's patient. So something not to think at ab about. But the interesting thing was, so the team really listened very carefully to the domain experts and understood what, what, is, uh, what Alzheimer's disease is about. But at the same time, then started the creation process and what came out, so what, what the robo now did just after one week uh, end, was so amazing that everybody involved said, okay, we need to carry on. So a startup formed, uh, other initiatives are starting to really explore this area. Not to say this will be the solution for everything, but maybe just a component that could help. So, uh, trying to explore things uh, also with the right methodology, uh, just to find the ways how to integrate uh, intelligence into our day-to-day -day life in all aspects, from music to doctors to, to maybe boring in, uh, processes uh, in a um, huge corporation and to make it nice is, is something definitely worthwhile thinking about. So, but back to the creative application. And um, as we are not only approaching the end of my talk today, um, we are also uh, approaching Christmas. And this is my Christmas wish. So I want to have that dress for Christmas. So if anybody wants to think about that. So uh, this dress is also special and it's cognitive and it's uh, also a, a, a really nice way of thinking. So when you look closely, you see that the dress has 150 uh, embroidered flowers and in each flower you see an LED light. So, and uh, imagine if I was now on stage with all the lights on my dress and it could reflect your social media temperament. So, what you feel, your sentiment, uh, and just reflect it in the color. So, rosé or green uh, 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 aqua would be great because it would say excitement. And what, what we have done here is that uh, sort of from all social media tweets around that event at the Met Gala from Woke. Um, so, um, so the sentiment was analyzed, so whether it was excited or just full of joy. Joy was rosé, uh, blue was um, excitement, green was something else. And then uh, the dress sort of shown in all the different colors of the temperament and, and sentiment around that dress. So it would be, I think, just a great way of reflecting what you're just thinking right now. So, and I hope it would be full of joy and excitement when, when I was here with this dress. Um, so coming to the end, so I really want to say that matching the human mind for me is not only just copying a computer that is thinking the same way that a human, for me, it is finding a co-creation partner and really thinking about, fearlessly thinking about and exploring the world, how we can integrate that technology 
into our daily life because I see a lot of positive ways of in incorporating that. And if we can use that technology for helping to better diagnose cancer and finding the best treatments, if we can make um, a process more efficient and uh, or for a consumer things more, more easy, I think that, that are great applications. So it is a, a joint way and it, it requires... Uh, also open-mindedness and, and to explore the world and really finding a great partner. But um, as always, finding a partner, this is only, not only one way, it's always two ways. So um, I've asked my favorite cognitive system uh, what he can find out about myself as a partner for co-creation. And this is what my uh, cognitive system finds out about me. And, and maybe this is also of interest to you, so because I'm really open for finding co-creation partners in the human world and maybe also in the world of augmented intelligence. And with that, thank you very much.